Hi, my name is Hannah Meyer, and today we'll be learning how to make this basic hat with our Learn to Knit Kit Level 3. Uh, we will be learning how to do things like casting on, knitting, purling, decreasing, seaming, and also talking about gauge and blocking. In our next section, we'll be going over our materials list so you can make your very own hat. You have your box kit, let's see what's inside. We have level three, the hat booklet. It has your pattern, instructions, photos, everything you need. Uh, we'll be covering most of it in the video, so you don't need it right now, but it's great for when you're not near your computer. We have a size six set of straight needles, everything you need for your hat. We have a darning needle, which is great for weaving in ends and seaming. We have two balls of gloss DK for your hat. And then lastly, we have a pin that shows you completed this box kit. In the next section, we will be learning how to cast on. Welcome back. We're going to do our slip knot and cast on now. You're going to want to pull out three times the yarn as the width of your finished project. Our hat is 19 inches, so you're going to want to pull out 60 inches of yarn plus 8 to 10 inches for your tail. So let's pull out about 16 inches. Again, this is approximate. Um, it's just a good place to start. You can never have too much yarn. So there's about 70. In order to do our slip knot, right about here, make a loop, place the loop so it goes over top of the yarn coming from the ball. And then you take your needle and you thread it under the loop that's coming from, or the, the yarn that's coming from the ball in the loop pick that up so it makes a slip knot. You've got two strands coming off the slip knot. One is attached to your ball. One is the strands you, the amount you've counted off earlier. You grab both of them with your pinky, wrap it around, insert your pointer finger and your thumb between the strands, making sure that the working yarn attached to the ball of yarn is going around your thumb and the tail is going around your pointer finger. You then take the tip of your needle and then you insert it around your thumb and you grab the strand that comes around your pointer finger and pull it through the loop that's gone around your thumb. You do that again. Insert the tip of your needle underneath the strand that's coming around the back of your thumb. Grab the strand that's coming around the back side of your pointer finger and you pull it tight again go underneath the strand going around your thumb, grab the pointer finger, finger strand, let it go, and then pull it tight. So continue in that way until you have 88 stitches. Remember that the slip knot is your first stitch. And meet me back here in the next video to learn how to knit and purl. Welcome back. In the last section, you cast on all 88 stitches. In this section, we'll be doing the ribbing for our hat. Uh, ribbing is that nice stretchy section at the bottom of your hat that will keep it snug and keep it from rolling. In this case, our ribbing will consist of two knit stitches followed by two purl stitches, followed by two knit stitches and two purl stitches all the way across. And that will give you that nice stretchy edge. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is doing two knit stitches. In order to do that, you wanna make sure that you're take, you've got the needle with all of your cast on stitches in your left hand and you want to grab the working yarn, which is the yarn coming from the ball, not your tail, this yarn. And you will take your second needle, put the empty one in your right hand, your right hand. You take the tip of your, your empty needle and you'll be putting it through the loop. You'll pull your working yarn between the two needles, pull it through that loop, drop off that old stitch off the left hand needle. So now you just have the new stitch, the new loop on the right hand needle. You will do the same thing again for the second stitch. It's going to be another knit stitch. So you come up from the bottom to the top, up through that loop. Put your working yarn between the two needles over that right hand needle, and then you're pulling it through, and then you drop off that old stitch off the left hand needle. Now you have two knit stitches on your right hand needle. Next, we'll be doing the purl stitch. You will move your right hand needle to the front, so over top of that left hand needle. With it, you'll bring the yarn between the two needles also to the front. You're going to pick up that yarn between the two needles. You're going to thread it through, and then you're going to slip that stitch off 
the left hand needle. Bring the tip of that right hand needle down through the loop. Put the yarn between the two needles again. Grab it with that right hand needle. You're gonna slip it through, drop it off the left hand needle. So you're gonna continue all the way across with the next two stitches, which are two knit stitches, followed by two purl stitches, all the way to the end. You end with two purl stitches, and then we'll meet back here and we'll do the second row together. Welcome back, we've done our first row. We're about to start a second row. Um, you will notice in while you worked the first row that when you worked purl stitches, you end up with a little bump in the front. When you worked your knit stitches, you end up with a little V in the front. It lies a little flatter. Going forward, you're gonna to wanna to stack the purl bumps over purl bumps and knit stitches over knit. So you'll know when you've gotten a little off if things look a little odd and they're not stacking properly. And you wanna look at your work and see what's happened. So turn your work. So now your, um, the needle with all the stitches on it is in your left hand. Your empty needle is in your right hand. Yarn tail is coming off the front. When you look at it, you'll realize that the first two stitches are now knit stitches. The back side of every purl stitch is a knit stitch, and the back side of every knit stitch is a purl stitch. So now, since we ended with two purls, we're going to start with two knits. In order to do the knits, you have your work in your left hand. You're going to take your needle, and you're going to work a knit stitch like we have the first time, like we did the first round. You insert your right hand needle. You're going to bring the yarn through that loop, pull it forward, and then you're going to drop that old stitch off the left hand needle, and you have your fresh stitch on your right hand needle. You do it again by moving the right hand needle from front to back underneath the left hand needle, pulling the yarn through, and then slipping that old stitch off. You've got two fresh stitches on your right needle. Next, we're going to work two purl stitches by bringing the yarn forward like we did before, bringing the right hand needle forward as well, so now it's stacked over top. You're going to grab the yarn, pull it through the loop, slip that old loop off, and now you have a fresh purl stitch on your right hand needle. You do it one more time by tip into the front of the stitch, and then you're grabbing the yarn, pulling it through, and then dropping that old loop off the left hand needle. You're going to work across like this all the way till the end. You'll have two purl stitches at the very end, and you're going to work ribbing until it measures two inches from the cast on edge. In the next section, we'll, we'll talk about gauge. Let's talk about gauge. For this project, we're going to want a gauge of 18 stitches in 24 rows for four inches. Gauge is the number of stitches and the number of rows you have per inch. We have specified four rows, so we want to make sure that you're getting the right number of stitches so you get a 19 inch hat at the end. If you're a little off, by either having a little bit too, too few stitches or too many stitches, you can wind up with a hat that's too big or too small. You want to make sure you get the right size hat. Our gauge was measured on a piece of stockinette knitting. A stockinette is a row of knit followed by a row of purl, followed by a row of knit, purl, so you get a flat fabric and it's easy to measure. If your gauge is a bit off, one way or the other, smaller, larger, you can compensate by knitting looser or tighter. If your gauge is too small, you want to knit a little looser. If your gauge is too large, you want to knit a little tighter. You can use a ruler or needle gauge or tape measure to measure out your four inches. You want to make sure that you make a swatch that's slightly larger than four inches. So we suggest six inches if you're looking for a four inch swatch. That, is, that means casting on 26 stitches and working a row of knit and a row of purl followed by a row of knit and purl for 30 rows until it's, so it's six inch square. You then take your ruler or your needle gauge or your tape measure and you will put it so that the end is a little bit in from the fabric but starts at the edge of one knit stitch. You can tell it's the V, you wanna start the left leg of your V and then measure over until you've got four inches centered on your swatch and then you're going to count how many stitches you have for those four inches. After you're able to get 18 stitches and 24 rows for four inches, you know you're ready to go and you can get started on your hat. And we're back. We've done two inches of ribbing and we're going to start our stockinette section. We're going to start, if you've done your gauge swatch, you've already worked stockinette, which is one row of knit, one row of purl. Um, the difference with this though is that we're going to slip the first stitch of every row. That'll make it easier to seam it up at the end. It makes an extra large knit stitch at the beginning of every row. So I will show you how to do that. And in order to slip a stitch, 
you will start with your ribbing in your left hand on that needle, your empty needle in your right hand as usual. You're going to insert your needle as if to knit. So again, from front to back with your right hand needle stacked below the left hand needle. And instead of throwing your yarn around or in, tucking your yarn through, you're just going to um, slip that old stitch off. So you're not gonna work it, it's just gonna be slipped from left to right. Going from there, you're going to knit across. So you're going to work a regular knit stitch by going from front to back. You're gonna throw your yarn, you're going to pull it through and drop that stitch off. So now you've got a slip stitch, a knit stitch on your right hand needle. Now you've come to two purl stitches. And in order to work those, you're just gonna treat them like knit stitches. You're gonna go through from front to back like you did before. You're going to, ins you're gonna wrap your yarn around the needle, pull it through, and then slip that old stitch off. So now you've got a, knit, a slip stitch, a knit stitch, and then a knit stitch in a purl stitch. And we're gonna do that for the next stitch as well. So you're going to insert your right hand needle, you're gonna wrap your yarn through, and you're gonna pull it through. You're gonna slip that stitch off. You're gonna work the rest of the round knit all the way to the end, and I'll meet you at the last stitch and show you how to turn. Okay, so you've worked across to your last stitch. We're gonna knit the last stitch and then we're going to turn the row, uh, turn your work, so you're working the second row. So you've knit the last stitch, you're gonna turn it. So now your working piece is in your left hand, your empty needle's in your right, and you're going to slip this first stitch like you did last time, but it's a purl stitch, so we're gonna slip it purl-wise. So you've got your right hand needle, you're going to slip it under the loop towards you, like you're going to purl, but instead of throwing the yarn around it and pulling it through, you're just going to slip that stitch off, unworked. So now you just move it from left to right. You're next going to work a purl stitch by going down through the front, pull the yarn over top, and then pull it through the loop, and then drop that stitch off. Do it one more time. You're going to insert your right hand needle, wrap the yarn, pull it through, and then slip that stitch off your left hand needle. So now you've got a slipped stitch, two purl stitches in your right hand needle, and you're gonna continue purling all the way across until the end, you're gonna turn it, slip that first stitch. Remember each row going forward, you're gonna slip the first stitch, no matter what, knit or purl. You're going to work stockinette, so it's knit, purl, all the way until you've got six inches from your cast on edge. And then we'll meet back here for the decrease section. All right, so we've worked our two inches of ribbing and then our stockinette, so we've got six inches of knitting already done. So we're about to work on the decreasing. Decreasing is when you're taking away stitches periodically to shape a piece. So this is gonna give us that nice round crown at the top of our hat, and not a pointy hat, and it doesn't just end, it will just nicely slope down. So our first row of decreases will be on our right side, which is our knit side. So we're gonna start, and I'll walk through the whole row with you, the first row. So our instructions say slip one stitch, so it's SL, and that means you're just slipping it like everything else. Um, and then you're working eight stitches, so it's K8, and then it says K2 together. That's our decrease. That means that you are knitting two stitches at once, taking away a stitch. And then you'll see an asterisk in that instruction. That means that's the beginning of your repeat. A repeat is a section of instructions that you will, you will do over and over again. You'll ignore what came before, and you will just work what happens from that asterisk to the word repeat. So our repeat says K9, which is knit nine stitches, and then K2 together, it's your decrease, and then you're knitting nine again, and you're gonna repeat that over and over again until the end, you'll end with a knit nine. So our first, step, our first step for this row is to slip one. So we're gonna do that, and you're all experts at that by now. So slip one, and you're going to K8. So you're gonna knit eight stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we're at our decrease, so it's the K2 together, K2 tog. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your right hand needle and you're going to skip the first stitch on your left hand needle and you're going to jump to the second stitch in. You're going to insert your needle as if you're going to knit that stitch, but you're going to put it through both of the, the last two stitches on that left hand needle at once. And you're going to pull it through both of those stitches at once. And you're gonna slip them both off of the left hand needle 
and you're going to wind up with one stitch on your right hand needle. So that means you've decreased, you've combined both the stitches into one. Then you're going to see your asterisk and from here on out, this is your repeat, you're going to knit nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and here is your K2 together. So again, we're going to insert our needle. We're going to skip the first stitch, go the second one in. We're going to insert it, go through both stitches at once, wrap your yarn around, pull it through both stitches again, and then slip both of those off of your left hand needle. Now you just have one loop on your right hand needle. Then you're going to knit nine, K2 together, knit nine, K2 together, all the way to the end with your last K9. And then you're going to turn your work, that'll be the end of the row, turn your work, slip that stitch purl wise like you've been doing on all your wrong side rows, your purl side rows, purl across, all the way across, you're not decreasing that second row, you're just working even. Then the next side will be another decrease row, you will slip the first one and you'll notice that this row will, will say K7, so you're knitting seven and then you're knitting two together, again, like we just did. And then your asterisk will appear and you will see a knit eight. So you're knitting eight stitches, knitting those together, knitting two together, knitting eight, knitting two, knitting eight, knitting two. And then that will be your decrease. You'll notice going forward in the pattern that each section will have one fewer stitch between each of those K2 togethers. Those are the stitches you're taking away. You're taking them out of the repeat and you don't need to do them. You're decreasing your stitches. So you will see the next round after that will be K6 together, and then K5, and then K4, all the way down until row 18 or ni row 19 will be the one that we will come to next. And that's a little different, so I'll show you how to do that in the next set, next set. All right, so you've worked all your decreases. We're at row 19, where it says K2 together across. I'll show you how to do that, I'll get you started, and then I will see you at the end for the next row where we pull the yarn through all the remaining stitches and finish off that part of the hat. So what you wanna do is you're not gonna slip the first stitch anymore, that's done. You're just going to knit two together as you've been doing for your decreases. So you're gonna slip your needle through the two stitches, pull the yarn through, slip those two stitches off your left hand needle. Now you've got one on your right. You can do that again. You're not gonna have any regular knit stitches in between. You're just gonna go from K2 together to K2 together all the way across. So again, you're slipping your needle through both stitches, wrapping the yarn, pulling it through, and slipping those off. So continue in that manner across to the end, and I will see you for the next round. All right, you've worked all your decreases, and you're at the very last eight stitches. What we're going to do is we're going to snip the yarn from the ball and leaving a about a 12 to 20 inch yarn tail at the end. So that's the yarn you're going to use to thread through your remaining stitches to finish the top of your hat and also the same yarn you're going to use to stitch up the side. So it becomes a complete full circle hat. So what we're gonna do is we've snipped the yarn. We have our darning needle. We're going to thread that yarn tail through the darning needle and then starting from, if you're looking at your needle, you've got your project flat, the purl side is up, and you're gonna start on the right side. So it's the side that has the um, end bracket on it, not the pointy end, the other end. You're going to run your darning needle through all the loops by putting it next to your knitting needle and just running it through each loop cleanly from right to left going back towards your very last stitch there. So it's back towards where the, the yarn tail starts. You're running your needle through. It's okay to take a break halfway through sometimes. You need to pull it through a little bit and then just run it back up and through the rest of your stitches. So now you've run one continuous loop through all eight stitches. You are then going to slip your knitting needle out of those stitches and then pull the yarn tail tight. You're going to then run your darning needle through the hat right where you came out and then tie a knot. So to just finish it up and keep it all together. The next step is seaming your hat using the same tail and I will show you how to do that next. All right, so you have now 
use the yarn tail to thread to the top. You've cinched that up. It's all done. All you have left to do is seam your piece into one big hat. So what you're going to do is you're going to lay it so the knit side is down. You're looking at your purl side. You're going to take those raw edges of each side that you were working on, all those slip stitches, and you're going to lay them next to each other, facing you with the ribbing towards you. So you're looking at the crown of the hat and your yarn tail and you're going to work from there. We're going to work the mattress stitch, which works down either side, kind of like lacing up your shoes. We're going to do it loosely, and then we're going to cinch it up towards the end, kind of periodically. Um, so don't worry about being super tight. You just want to make sure that um, you're getting the edges close so you can see that it's working out. Um, it makes it easier to undo it if something goes wrong. So we have threaded our needle with a, your yarn tail and you're going to look at the right side so the, the yarn tail is coming from the left, you're looking at the right side now, and you can see those slip stitches you did along the edge. We're going to skip past that stitch, those big elongated stitches, and we're going to go between those edge two, last two knit stitches. So you see your two V's, this edge V, and then the second one in. There's a bar of yarn connecting the two going along the back side of the, the piece you're going to go ahead and take your darning needle and you're going to pick up that bar between the two knit stitches and you're going to go underneath it and you're going to push your yarn needle all the way through and pull the yarn through. So you picked up that bar, you're coming out, now you're going to go onto the left side of your piece, find the same bar on the other side, it should be one bar for one all the way down, you should keep it equal. So you find that last slip stitch, you go one in, find the bar of yarn that is between those last two knit stitches pick it up towards you again, and then you pull your yarn needle through, and you're lacing it up a little bit. You go back to the right side, do the same thing again. You find that bar of yarn that connects the two Vs, run your needle through it, And then back to the left one more time. You slip, find that bar, insert your needle, pull it through, and you tighten that up a little bit, and you'll start to see those knit edges coming together really nicely in a really even way. You're going to continue like that all the way down the stockinette section. Stop when you get to the ribbing, and we'll do the whip stitch, which is slightly different, um, and then we'll be all done. Okay, so you have worked through your stockinette section, you're now at ribbing. What we're going to do, still threaded, we're going to turn our hat inside out and you are then going to hold the two edges together, kind of adjust it so that they're even. You're going to take your yarn, it's now coming out towards the inside, and you're going to find those two, the last knit stitch on either side, you'll see them running up the side, insert the needle there, and you're going to run it straight across through to the other side. There's another V stitch on exactly the opposite side. You can run behind that one. Then you're going to come up and over, and you're going to run it behind the next V stitch. So you're coming down on the right side, run it behind there, and then you're going to run it behind the V stitch on the left side that corresponds directly across. You're going to do that all the way down. It's only a handful of stitches, and that's called the whip stitch. So you're inserting it, drawing it through, through each stitch all the way down. And once you're done with this section, you are going to weave in the last of our ends, and you'll be all set. So you've finished seaming up your hat, you've done your whip stitch, and the next step we're going to do is weaving in our yarn tails. Um, you will have two yarn tails at the end, uh, unless you have started your second ball within this project, you'll have two more yarn tails somewhere else in your hat. We'll deal with those the same way we're going to do this next step. The first thing you're going to do is take your darning needle and thread your yarn tail through it. Like so. You might have a gap at the bottom of your seam and we're going to close that by running your uh, darning needle across that gap into the ribbing at the very bottom and closing it up by inserting it here and then drawing it tight. So you've closed the gap and you're going to run your yarn tail up the seam that you've just created by running your darning needle through your stitches until you're up in the body of the hat. So you're going to run your needle through your seam until we're up there. 
Now we're going to take a moment and look. Um, you can either snip it here, and that's secure enough for your hat, or you can make it even more secure by weaving in your yarn end in your purl stitch section up in the body of your hat. Looking at your fabric, the purl fabric is made up of what we call just like arching stitches. So you've got um, smiles, they arch up a little bit, so they curve up, or we've got frowns and they curve down. So looking at your fabric, you should have, your first row should be a row of smiling stitches, so they arch up. You're going to go um, through the first one next to your seam, and then you're going to, from the bottom to the top, and then you're going to come down through the next smile stitch. So you're going to arch down, come through that smile stitch that's next to it, and pull that through. And you're going to do the same thing for the next ones. You're going to come up through the bottom of the next smile stitch. And again, through the top of the next smiling stitch. So you're going to come towards yourself. Okay. You have now woven your yarn tail. You need to um, take a moment to kind of stretch your fabric a little bit as you would while you're wearing it, like that sort of stretching, um, just to make sure that everything's evened out and you're not going to pull the yarn tail out. Then you're going to snip it fairly close to the fabric. And then you've woven in your yarn tail. All right, so you finished that yarn tail. You have a second yarn tail to weave it in the same manner. Um, you can weave it up the seam and then over, just like you just did. If you have two more yarn tails, do the same thing wherever they are in the hat, and then you'll be done. You finished your hat, and now is a good time to think about blocking. If your stitches are a little uneven or your hat's a, a little bit small, you can even things out or adjust the sizing just a little bit by blocking the instructions in your booklet. And now that we're all done, you can wear your handy pin now that you finished level three.